shalom and shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Trumpet's Call. I'm Maria. I pray that you are holding on to faith, amuna, and holding on to hope during these times. Thank you for joining me once again on the channel and for another session of our Torah Tidbits. Today's session of our Torah Tidbits may be more like a Torah chunk. So I just want to give you a little heads up. So I pray that you are doing well today and that you're really holding on because our change is coming. It's coming. It may seem like it's taking forever, but when it arrives, we won't remember the pain. We won't remember the discomfort of these days. So continue to hold on to faith and hold on to your hope. So today's session of our Torah Tidbit, we're going to be talking about a subject that was raised on our last live. We were talking about fabrics. We're talking about linen and wool and the commandment to not mix linen and wool. And why? Why that's important. So today we're going to be talking a little bit about linen and wool and the benefits of them and the father's wisdom in insisting that we never mix linen and wool. So we're going to get right into it for today. We're going to start off talking about linen and wool, healing fabrics. Yes, healing fabrics. Did you know that? Did you know that linen and wool were actually fabrics that heal the body and help to maintain health and vitality? I certainly didn't know that. The father certainly knew. And that is why he gave us commandments concerning these things. So we're going to do some research. Just look into linen and wool and their benefits. So as we look into these things, I pray you'll take a few notes so that you can make note of the things that we are sharing here today. And I do believe that some of the things that you hear here today will lead you to make some changes in your life regarding adding more wool and or linen or both to your repertoire. So we read in the Encyclopedia of the Bible on BibleGateway.com, we read the listing under wool. And the Hebrew word for wool is samar, samar, T-S-A-M-A-R, samar. And it reads, the sheep in Palestine were sometimes black or brown, a recessive trait providentially appearing more frequently in Jacob's flocks than would be expected by normal Mendelian heredity. The wool was occasionally dyed scarlet. Shearing in one piece gave a desirable fleece, which was washed first in the brook and later with soap to make it nearly snow white. Following the cleansing, the usual carding, spinning, and weaving occurred. Some wool from the tanneries was stuffed into mattresses and quilts, instead after being removed by slaked lime. He goes on to say, the wool was woven into outer garments, never mixed with linen. This was especially true of the priests. And then it goes on to talk about the scriptures that give mention of wool in the scriptures. And I'm not going to read that. You can uh, pause the video and read that if you desire to do so. I'm going to skip down to the second paragraph and it says, In purifying the tabernacle and its vessels, in addition to blood and water, scarlet wool and hyssop were used in the sprinkling during the covenant ceremony. Probably this wool was scarlet stuff, burned with a heifer and used in cleansing the leper. Part of the first wool was offered to the priest as their due. Gideon is famous for putting out a wool fleece. The revilings of men against the righteousness will be eaten like worm eats wool. So these are some references to how the word wool or how wool is used in the scriptures. It goes on to say, the whiteness of wool as a symbol of purity is contrasted with the crimson of sins and compared to snow or the snow of the ancient of days. Okay. What we're looking at here in this rendering of wool is the idea that wool is used in the process of cleansing. The whiteness of the wool after it has been sheared from the sheep and washed, it indicates purity and cleansing. And wool is used along with hyssop to bring about cleansing. Okay, so the idea of wool leads one to believe that it is engaged or used in a process of cleansing or it is a symbol for cleansing in the scriptures. And this information can be found at BibleGateway.com. So now we're going to watch a little video that shows us how the wool is harvested from the sheep and then turned into fabric. Merino wool is nature's original eco and performance fiber 
grown on the simple mix of fresh air, sunshine, water and grass. Each year, Australian merino sheep grow a new fleece. This renewable fibre is harvested by skilled shearers and then classified for quality. Merino wool is processed by two methods. Long, uniform wools go through worsted processing, whereas shorter wools go through woolen processing. Processing starts with scouring in hot water and detergent to wash away dirt and collect lanolin, which is a natural byproduct used in cosmetics. After drying, merino wool goes through a process known as carding. Carding opens up the wool fibre staple, ready for further processing. At the end of carding, the wool can be split into slubbings for woolen spinning or formed into a sliver for worsted processing. The worsted sliver is gilled by pulling it through metal teeth to align the fibres and make them ready for combing where the sliver is pulled through a fine tooth comb, leaving short fibres and any contamination behind, ensuring both high quality and purity. The longer fibres are formed into a second sliver, known as top, which is reduced in thickness by drawing into a fine worsted roving, ready for spinning. Both worsted rovings and woolen slubbings are twisted during spinning to bind the fibres into a strong yarn. Worsted yarns are fine and smooth. Woolen spun yarns have texture and bulk. Yarns can be knitted by forming interlocking loops of yarn using straight flatbed, 3D knitting, or circular knitting systems. Woven fabrics are made by interweaving weft yarns across warp yarns, which run the length of the resulting fabric. Colour is applied and fully absorbed into the wool fibre by dyeing in water. This process can be carried out at almost any stage, from loose wool, top, yarn, fabric and even at the garment stage. Wool can be coloured with synthetic or natural dye for endless possibilities. Merino fabrics and garments are finished by washing to clean and soften, drying and then pressing with steam or ironing to remove creases. Ready to be made into luxurious, technical and eco-friendly products during making up and sewing. Wool's unique journey from the sheep's back to leading retailers weaves age-old techniques with modern technology, transforming the original eco and performance fiber into luxuriously soft and highly technical yarns. So that was a very succinct video that demonstrates how the wool is harvested from the sheared sheep and then turned into a fabric. And what's wonderful about the process is that the sheep aren't harmed at all. The sheep develop a winter coat and they don't need all of that extra wool on themselves. So it's actually a mercy to be sheared by the shepherd and then have that wool be available to first extract the lanolin from it so that it can be used for moisturizing processes. And then you can turn the wool into just about anything you need to turn it into fabric. You can use it for pillows, for blankets, for all manner of things. And we can see our ancestors doing this and using this wool in all manner of ways. But they just couldn't mix it with linen. So as we continue, we see that Dabarim, or Deuteronomy chapter 22, you shall not plow with an ox and a donkey together. You shall not wear a garment of different sorts, such as wool and linen mixed together. You shall make tassels on the four corners of your clothing with which to cover yourself. Okay, so the father's telling us in this judgment on the statute that he's creating here in Deuteronomy chapter 22, that you should not mix fabric of sorts, such as linen and wool. Now, there is no commandment here to not mix cotton with linen, okay? It doesn't say that. It mentions linen and wool. And there's actually a reason why the scripture is telling us not to mix linen and wool. And we're going to get to that in just a bit as we continue our discussion. So now we're going to be talking a little bit about linen. Linen, it says, is the oldest known fabric in the world. Between linen and wool, I think they're two of the oldest fabrics in the world and so they've been around for a long time many priests royalty and warriors have worn linen so what 
And why has that been the case? What has made linen so long lasting? And why is it that you should consider wearing more linen? Well, let's go back to BibleGateway.com and look up their listing for linen. And it reads, linen. The Hebrew word for linen is pashath. Pashath. Okay. So it says linen or pashath, a general term for flax or the flax plant, or the fiber of flax from which linen yarn is made. So this is just indicating that linen comes from the fibers of the flax plant. So we're going to skip ahead here. And it reads, linen is a fabric woven from yarn made of the fine fibers of the stalk of the flax plant. The term also designates clothes and garments made of linen. As we continue on, I'm going to put a picture on the screen of what flax looks like. A flax plant. It's a beautiful plant with a beautiful periwinkle, lavender-like flower on it. It's just a very pretty plant. Very, very pretty. And in its dried state, you, you see on the screen, this is what it looks like. And so the fibers inside the stalk are actually harvested and turned into a type of thread. And then this thread is woven into cloth. It's an amazing process, really amazing. So as we continue, we see that linen is a fabric woven from the yarn made from the fine fibers of the stalk of the flax plant. The term also designates clothes and garments made of linen. Since the bleach fabric was often flashing white, the term whiteness or shash or shish also means linen. The term fine linen in the Bible refers to sheer, often almost translucent material of the expensive, finely woven linen worn by royalty and wealthy people or the priests of the temple. The flax plant was common in Egypt, being cultivated extensively in the fertile Nile Valley. Egyptian linen and weaving was considered the best of ancient times, so much so that some could not distinguish the fabric from silk. That's amazing. That is amazing to not be able to distinguish linen or fine linen from silk. That's, that's, that's remarkable. Flax also was introduced into Palestine early and was grown in the Jordan Valley near Jericho, also in Galilee. The flax stalk grew quite tall and was cut or pulled up by the roots near full growth, dried for a time in the sun, then pounded vigorously to separate the fine fibers, washed and bleached. The yarn, so fine at times as to be almost invisible, was ready for the weaver. Okay, so that's found in uh, BibleGateway.com. And so we're now going to take a look at a little video. And the video is going to show us the process from harvesting all the way to the production of cloth of how linen is harvested. So take a watch.
What a fascinating process to think of stalks, stalks from a plant being pounded and fibers being extracted, being turned into a thread, and then from that thread being woven into a cloth. It's amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And it's pretty strong cloth from what I understand. Pretty versatile, pretty durable. From the website Natural Inspiration, we're going to be reading this article entitled The Healing Power of Linen. In the not so distant past, less than a hundred years ago, and right on back to the fall of man, people robed themselves in linen, wool and animal hides, from their outerwear to their underwear, including their socks. They slept on linen. They used linen towels, napkins, and tablecloths for personal and ceremonial purposes, wore linen hats, coats, gloves, and sashes. Linen is hyperallergenic, antibacterial, and antifungal. And by the way, so was wool. Until recently, it has been recently used for sutures and bandages. It breathes. It keeps the body cooler in hot temperatures and warmer in cold. Linen can absorb moisture up to 20% without feeling damp. It resists dirt and stains. It does not produce static electricity. In fact, it kills it. Linen is radiation resistant. Linen reduces the effects of chemical exposure, can cut down noise, linen curtains and drapes, and dust. Linen produced from flax is the strongest of all vegetable fibers, two or three times stronger than cotton. Linen is God's or Yah's holy fiber, a protective and healing gift to man. And I just didn't realize, family, just what a great gift linen and wool are until I started to do a little research on it. It's absolutely astounding. Absolutely astounding. Thanks to Nobel Prize winner Dr. Otto Heinrich and several other research doctors and scientists, we know for a, we know for a modern undisputed fact that linen and wool both have an atomic frequency signature of 5,000 megahertz. Human energy registers between 70 and 90 megahertz. Anything above that is beneficial and healing to humans. In 2003, a Jewish doctor, Heidi Yellen, did a study on the frequencies of fabrics in which she showed that a healthy human body has a signature frequency of 100 hertz. And wearing a material that measures less than 100 hertz or units of energy would compromise our well-being. Each fabric gives off a frequency that can be measured in megahertz. Organic cotton has a tested value of 110 megahertz, polyester around 10. A diseased person generally measures 15 megahertz. Wool and linen both have a signature of 5,000 megahertz. Talk about a healing fabric. That amazing naturally created feature of the fabrics will also give energy to your body as you wear it. It is important, however, not to wear linen and wool together. However, as the frequencies in both the linen and the wool fibers run in opposite current directions, if you wear them together, the two frequencies will cancel each other out and bring you to a zero. The scriptures told us the same thing. We just read it as we began. The father says, do not wear linen and wool together. And now we know why, because they cancel each other out and it brings you to a diseased state. Meaning if you're at zero, if you're wearing clothing that brings your energy down to a zero level, it won't be long before that's going to have a really negative effect on your body. And so will wearing clothing that's at a 10 or 15 Hertz, that too will have a negative effect on your body long-term. It goes on to say, zero frequency fabrics can interfere with man's energy frequency. They can cause measurable weakness, headaches, and even severe pain in some sensitive persons. Many are finding themselves allergic to synthetic fabrics. How many people have symptoms whose cause is unidentified? And it may be just the clothes they wear or the new synthetic sheeps that they sleep in. It has been scientifically proven that linen can expedite the healing process post-injury and post-surgery by wearing it, bandaging and suturing with it. 
thanks to its healing energy of 5,000 megahertz. It also bears mentioning that surgeons are able to suture our bodies with the fibers from the flax plant. That is how a synergistic effect flax has with the human body. It's as if they were made for each other. And I think perhaps that's what the father had in mind. Continuing. Also, those who sleep in linen bed clothes, sheets, and pillowcases fall asleep faster, sleep deeper, and longer, and wake up more energized and rested. Continuing. Manufacture warning. Deuteronomy 22.11 says, Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts as of woolen and linen together. Do not wear clothes of wool and linen together. Leviticus 19.19 says, Neither shall a garment mingled of linen and woolen come upon thee. So the Father is protecting us here, telling us, Don't wear linen and wool because it will not have a synergistic effect. It will not have a positive effect on your body. It will bring you down to zero megahertz and it will soon sap your body of its energy and its strength. Continuing, Yah never said anything about two kinds of fabric. He said linen and wool in both verses. Newer idiotic translations have changed it into fabrics, and some are using examples of synthetic fabrics. Yes, I said idiotic. No, I didn't write this, family. <laughs> this is the author speaking. I did not write this. What would be the difference if you wore pure wool viscose or any other synthetic fabric as opposed to a fabric made of viscose or polyester? or any other synthetic fabric, nothing. They both have an energy output of zero or near to zero. Yahuwah knows what he's talking about. That's for sure. I agree with that. Here's the thing. It is scientifically proven that when linen and wool are worn together, the energy field around them collapses. It goes to zero. Not only are the fabrics no longer healthy and healing, but in short, they can make people sick. So heed the warning. Rope yourselves in linen and reintroduce linen into your home and experience the difference. If you choose to try linen sheets, don't forget and throw that woolen blanket on the bed. Yikes! Otherwise, do not forget and wear your wool coat over your linen clothes if you should wear them in the winter. So she's saying here that make sure that when you introduce linen, be sure to not mix it with wool. Bleaching, drying, or processing of linen does not change its frequency. The concern would be only about the toxic effects of bleach and synthetic dyes. All natural dyes are okay and have been used for thousands of years. I also would add here in my research, it's been found that linen actually reflects light. It reflects light and as such has a synergistic effect on the body with regard to healing as it relates to the sun. Oh, so it said in the research that I found that it's best not to engage too much with black linen. So if you're going to wear linen and it happens to be black, it's going to be a better effect on you than say wearing polyester. But if you could help it, try to stay with lighter colored linen fibers or fabrics, you know, your tans and your whites and your light blues and your light greens, just lighter colors so that they can reflect that light and add an additional healing benefit to you. There's a little follow up here at the end. It says, my daughter, who writes this blog, got me a set of linen sheets for Christmas. They celebrate Christmas. I can see a difference. I slept better the first night. And there are some physical issues I was having in the night that either don't bother me now or not as much. I am sold on the linen sheets and will be looking to donate my other sheets. Linen sheets, linen, bed, linen bedding. Should you swap yours out? That's between you, your spouse, the most high, and your budget. Because linen does tend to be kind of pricey. But if there is a natural fiber that can help your body to be whole, healed, and well, it seems to me it's worth the investment. So toward the end, I'm going to give you some ideas about how you can invest in linen in perhaps a not so expensive way. So we're going to continue on. We're going to watch a little video that talks about some more of the health benefits of linen. Many people choose clothes based on what's in style and what looks good to them. Some also choose their clothes based on how durable they are for the jobs that they do. But what if there was more to it? What if we could literally help heal our bodies and protect our bodies with choosing the right clothes? 
Many of us are familiar with linen, and we typically see a lot of linen in places like Florida. Let's look at the history and the benefits of linen and its biblical references. At the electronic cellular level, flax cells are highly complementary with human cells, producing a benevolent effect on the human organism. The human cell is capable of completely dissolving a flax cell. It is interesting that flax thread appears to be the only natural material utilized for internal sutures in a surgical setting. Scientists have discovered that linen fibers reflect light. The light energy aspect of living organisms has been measured by many individuals within the scientific community. Nobel Prize winning Dr. Ottawa Berry identified signature frequency numbers of the average human at 70 to 90. All results with numbers less than 50 were identified as the signature frequency of chronic disease. Any number less than 15 was identified with those having a diagnosed incurable condition such as cancer. The measurement of linen fabric measures 5,000 signature frequencies. How do other fabrics compare? Plant fibers like cotton and hemp are not a healing fiber when measuring its signature energy output. Standard bleached and colored cotton measures 40 units of energy. The good news is that organic unbleached cotton measures 100 units of energy, which is a normal, but not a healing fiber. The silk fabric measures 10 units of energy, which would fail to support health in the human body. Could it be a low number because of its origin? Silk is produced from an unclean insect. Could be that silk is unhealthy due to the use of many chemicals. Rayon measures a 15 signature frequency. Polyester, acrylic, spandex, lycra, viscose, and nylon measure zero and do not reflect light. Pure wool measures 5,000 units of energy. For any individual desiring to be well, the best recommendation from the instructions of the scriptures is to wear linen. The biblical warning of wearing wool and linen together proved in scientific studies to be accurate. The energy of these two fabrics put together, like a wool sweater on top of a linen outfit, collapsed the electrical field as well as wearing of black colored fabric. Where the two textiles measure 5,000 signature frequencies when put together, these canceled each other and brought measurable weakness and in some tests even pain to the body. Since the earliest times, flax has been known to have healing properties. In the Latin language, the word flax means being most useful, and the scriptures certainly emphasize this material over all other fabrics for the holy attire. In establishing the protocols and statutes of health, Moses received specific instructions. Cleansing a leper, meaning those incurable, gave only three distinct fabrics of attire, wool, linen, and leather. Thou shalt not wear a garment of diverse sorts, as of woolen and linen together. Historically, the beautiful white linen attire of the Hebrew people was with Yahuwah's specific instructions, the decisions as given in the commandments in Torah. This fabric is considered part of the sanctification path. Flax fabric is an excellent filter protecting against chemical exposure, noise, and dust. Linen clothing reduces solar gamma radiation by almost half, thereby protecting humans wearing linen. Flax fiber retrieved from contaminated soil appears to be totally resistant to harmful radiation. Linen underwear heightens positive emotions as well as possessing rare bacteriological properties. Resistant to fungus and bacteria, flax is found to be an effective barrier to some diseases. And according to Japanese researchers, studies have shown that bedridden patients do not develop bed sores where linen bed sheets are used. Wearing linen clothes helps to decrease some skin diseases from the common rash to chronic eczemas. Linen is highly hydroscopic, meaning it rapidly absorbs and gives up moisture. Absorbing water as quickly as a pond surface before giving a feeling of being wet, linen cloth can absorb as much as 20% of its dry weight. This explains why linen cloth always feels cool and fresh. Linen does not cause allergic reactions and is helpful in treating a number of allergic disorders. 
Linen is effective in dealing with inflammatory conditions, reducing fever, and providing a healthy air exchange. Some neurological ailments benefit from the use of linen clothing. Linen cloth does not accumulate static electricity. Even a small addition of flax fibers to a cloth is enough to eliminate the static electricity effect, and we're talking up to about 10%. Silica present in the flax fiber protects linen against rotting. Linen rejects dirt and does not get a furry texture. Linen provides a sensation of gentle, natural relief. The more linen is washed, the softer and smoother it becomes. If you wear black clothing, standard cotton clothing, rayon, polyester, and nylon stockings, these will hinder your health by discharging and extinguishing one's electrical field light. When put into nature law depletion, there will be darkness. The human body will struggle with nine areas of opened windows within the human body, making it vulnerable to attack. The areas of windows in the nerve bundle regions of the human body leak subtle energy fields with the reserves of mineral charges. The dead battery effect would drain until the cellular function would be termed useless. If you have good flax next to wool or other man-made fake fibers, the energy signature will discharge and one will suffer the consequences. This is the law of nature principle. What is at a higher level will come down to the average of the lower amount unless shielded. If you use cotton or rayon, these are not as strengthening to your body and may serve to keep your health average with the typical Western illnesses. If you want optimum health and healing and a strengthened immune system, you can choose to follow the instructions of the scripture in getting your holy wardrobe, knowing that you have the highest blessings available. Hallelujah for this knowledge for those who keep his ways. Hallelujah indeed. Hallelujah indeed. There are many, many, many health benefits to using linen. Not only is it biblical, not only is it scriptural, but it has so many health benefits. 5,000 megahertz of really high energy frequency is what your body experiences when you put on linen. It's amazing. It's resistant to radiation. It's resistant to static electricity. It's healing to the body. It helps to reduce inflammation in the body. And it helps to create a sense of ease within the body. And the Father knew this. He told us exactly where to go, what to do, and how to harvest this plant so that we can use it. The women would harvest the flax and they would turn it into linen cloth. Also, there were traders along the routes, along the trade routes, whom our ancestors would purchase fine linen from. And additionally, they made it. They're right there in-house. So what a wonderful fabric and what a wonderful opportunity we have to rediscover this really great health benefit that we didn't know about. What a great opportunity the Father has bestowed upon us at this time. So you see, coming to an idea or an awakening to our identity has many, many, many benefits. We learn that by doing things Yahuwah's way, it comes with benefit after benefit. Hallelujah. Wah. The Father is all wise. He is all knowing. And he knew exactly what he was doing when he gave us these commandments about wearing what we are to wear and what to mix, what not to mix, what to eat, what not to eat, what to do and what not to do, where to go and where not to go, how to live and how not to live. He knew exactly what he was doing. And when we listen to him, when we obey him, not only will we eat the good of the land, but we're going to have health and vitality. We're going to have long lives. We're going to benefit and be baruched. And his presence will abide and dwell with us when we obey. To obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. So all of this time, many of us have been avoiding linen. I know I have. I have not had much linen in my closet as the years have gone by because I found it to be kind of scratchy. I was like, oh, that's a scratchy fabric. I don't want to wear it. Had I known about this when I was in my 20s and 30s, oh my goodness, my closet will be, would be full of linen right now. But I didn't know 
because we were in Christianity, and Christianity didn't teach us these things. It didn't tell us that we needed to abide by Torah. But when we come into the truth and we realize who we are and we realize the Father's commandments and we keep them, there is barakah, blessing upon barakah, upon barakah, upon barakah. And so here is another benefit that the Father has given to us, linen. Linen has the ability, because of its high megahertz frequency signature, healing frequency signature, to heal the body, to bring about rest to the body. And I have been testing it out. So I know it's true based on my own personal experience. We're going to read a few verses of scripture regarding linen and just try to glean what we can from the scriptures behind the meaning of linen and what it means for us as believers and Hebrews and those who are praying that we would inherit the promises of Ab Yahuwah. So we will begin in Genesis or Barashit chapter 41. This is the first mention of linen in the scriptures, in the Hebrew scriptures. It begins, And Pharaoh said unto Yasef, or Joseph, See, I have set thee over all the land of Egypt. And Pharaoh took off his ring from his hand, and put it upon Joseph, or Yasef's hand, and arrayed him in vestures of fine linen, and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot, which he had, and they cried before him, Bow the knee. And he made him ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hallelujah. So we see in this passage that this is a, a foreshadowing. This is giving us a picture of the father allowing his son Yahusha, or giving his son Yahusha, reign over the earth and over all the kingdoms of the earth. And just as Yasef or Joseph was second only to Pharaoh, Yahusha is second only to the Father. He has rule and authority over everything else. Just like Yasef, Joseph had rule in Egypt over everything save Pharaoh, meaning except Pharaoh. So we see in this passage, we see there's a ring which indicates royalty and authority. So there's a ring that Pharaoh takes off of his finger and gives to Yasef. We see there is a vesture of fine linen, okay? Linen in the scriptures indicates righteousness. It is also a measure of royalty and a measure of the priesthood and a measure of wealth, especially because it's fine linen. Fine linen is extra special because it takes extra special care in order to derive the finest of fine linen. And so you would see those who were royalty and those who were in the priesthood wearing fine linen. And so we see Yosef or Joseph, who is a typology of Messiah here, wearing fine linen, an indication of his righteousness and an indication of the authority he's been given, an indication that he is Yahuwah's priest in this setting because he represents Yahuwah in this land of Egypt. And also we see a gold chain being put about his neck which is the gold representing that which has been tried and tested in the furnace. And we know Yasef, Joseph, had been tried and tested in many areas, and he was found faithful, and he was rewarded and given great might and power and authority within Egypt. In the same way, Yahusha, who has been tried and tested, will be given great might, power, and authority in the earth realm. Okay? So here we see in this passage the first mention of vestures of fine linen. And we see in the end of this sentence, it says at the end, it says, those who were before him had to bow the knee. All will have to bow the knee before Yahusha. And he was made ruler over the land of Egypt. As Yahusha is made ruler over all the earth, all will have to bow the knee before him and acknowledge the power and the authority given to him by the Father. In Shemuth, or Exodus chapter 26, we read, Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains of fine woven linen and blue, purple, and scarlet thread with artistic designs of cherubim. You shall weave them. The length of each curtain shall be 28 cubits and the width of each curtain four cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have the same measurements, 
five curtains shall be coupled to one another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled to one another. Okay, so we see here the rendering or instructions for the building of curtains within the tabernacle that was to be constructed in the wilderness. And so these curtains were to be made of fine linen, woven linen, okay? So once again, we see an indication here of linen being used. And this essentially forms the curtains between the rooms. You have the, the, the set-apart place or the holy place. Then you have the most holy place. You have the outer court. So all of these different rooms or areas are separated by linen curtains, okay? Woven linen curtains. And also in Shemuth chapter 26, verses 36 through 37, we see the door. You shall make a screen for the door of the tabernacle, woven of blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen made by a weaver. And you shall make for the screen five pillars of acacia wood and overlay them with gold. Their hooks shall be gold, and you shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. So not only is the tabernacle walls made of linen, but the doors also the doors that separate the rooms are made of fine linen as well, okay? The tabernacle itself is made of linen. So when you take a look at this picture on the screen, you'll see this, ta this is a tabernacle in the wilderness. And you see the outer court of the tabernacle is made of woven linen, okay? You see the tents where our ancestors dwelt made of woven linen. You see the, the set-apart place or the tabernacle made of woven linen. Some of it has been dyed, and some of it has the images of cherubim in them, but it's still made from woven linen. The whole of the tabernacle is made from linen, wood, gold, and bronze. And so each of these things is representative of something, okay? But the linen in and of itself, knowing what we know about it, knowing what we know about the frequency that it holds, it seems to me that the tabernacle had to be made with linen because of the presence of the Most High dwelling there. It's almost as if linen in and of itself is a frequency modulator between the presence of the Most High and his presence as he interacts and interface with his priests. It's like a frequency modulator. So if you think about it this way, if the human body is healthy at 100. 100 megahertz, that is a healthy human body, and diseased at, let's say, 15 or 20 megahertz, okay? Going from 100 to 5,000 is a big leap, okay? But there's something about the linen fabric, something about the fibers within the linen that is so uniquely tied and adjusted to the human body that it allows those frequencies to rest upon the body and it modulates them. It keeps them in check without causing the body to go haywire, okay? So as the power rests upon the high priest, the high priest can handle the presence of the Most High better because he's wearing this linen ephod, which is not only indicative of righteousness, which you have to be righteous in order for the power of the Father to fall upon you in such a way and have you not be destroyed, but also the indication is here that as the power falls upon the high priest, these extra frequencies that come by virtue of the fact that the Father has drawn near, they're modulated, they're regulated in the body of this individual, okay? And so this is what the linen represents. The tabernacle in and of itself modulates the frequencies of the Father. So if linen itself is 5,000 megahertz, can you imagine what the frequency of Ab Yahuwah would be? It'd be off the charts. <laughs> it's not something that you could even quantify. It would be bazillions time bazillions time bazillions you can't quantify it so when the father draws near and his presence draws near and his power is on his high priest or on his priest okay and he's serving in the tabernacle and they're close by where the father is where his presence is dwelling and you see here in this image that the cloud is resting over the holy place this is an indication of the father's manifest presence among the children of yasharal there is power there, and that's being modulated in this linen enclosure.
okay? This is what I see in the picture. This is what I see in this concept of linen, not only recognizing or representing righteousness, but also indicating a modulation of the power, the frequency of the Most High Yahuwah. Hallelujah, Yahuwah. And we're told to wear it. We're told to wear it and wool, but not together. But priests uniquely are to wear linen. They are not told to come before the Father in wool, but only in linen. Okay? The high priest and the priests. It goes on to say, So ye shall speak to all who are gifted artisans, whom I have filled with the Ruach of wisdom, that they may make Aharon Aaron's garments to consecrate him, that he may minister to me as priest. There's something about the garments that consecrates Aaron to the role and to the father, okay? But they had to be made as per specified, and they had to be made with a particular fabric, linen. Verse 4, And these are the garments which they shall make, a breastplate, an ephod, a robe, a skillfully woven tunic, a turban, and a sash. So they shall make holy garments for Aaron, a Harun, your brother, and his sons, that he may minister to me as priest. They shall take the gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and the fine linen, and they shall make the ephod of gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen, artistically worked. Okay, once again, we see instructions for the creation of the linen garments that Aaron Aharun is to wear, okay? Some of it's white linen and some of it's been artistically worked using dyed threads, okay? Woven in, into fine linen. And this is what he is to wear. And you'll see an image on the screen here of a high priest's garb, okay? And you can see the blue tunic that he's to wear. You can see the pomegranate bells on the end of his tunic. You can see the linen breeches or the linen pants that he's to wear. You can see he's got a linen tunic uh, under the robe that he's wearing. You can see the, the, the sash is made of linen. You can see the turban is made of linen. Everything that he's wearing is made of linen and there's some metal balls or gold balls in the pomegranate. But everything else is made of linen. And then you have onyx stones on the on the shoulders of the priest, indicating that those are the northern tribes and southern tribes on the shoulder. Shoulder represents government. But notice, it's all made of linen. You have stones on the breastplate, the urim and thummim. And then you have a gold crown and you have linen lots of linen. It goes on to say, you shall make the breastplate of judgment, artistically woven according to the workmanship of the ephod. You shall make it gold, blue, purple, and scarlet thread, and fine woven linen, you shall make it. So this breastplate of judgment is the breastplate, the umen and thumen, on his chest, in which he uses to divine the will of the Father for the people, on behalf of the people. We also read in 1 Samuel or 1 Shamuel, chapter 2, but Samuel, Shamuel, ministered before Yahuwah, even as a child, wearing a linen ephod. And the ephod, in and of itself, is an indication of the priesthood. So we have this child wearing the linen ephod, and there's this blessing, this barakah, that comes from wearing the linen, which is indicative of righteousness, standing before the Father made right in his sight. He goes on to say, Moreover, his mother used to make him a little robe and bring it to him year by year when she came up with her husband to offer the yearly sacrifice. Hallelujah. Let's read a little more. We're now going to be reading in Revelation, the book of Revelation chapter 19. Let us be glad and rejoice and give him glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his wife has made herself ready. And to her it was granted to be arrayed in fine linen, clean and bright, for the fine linen is the righteousness or the righteous acts of the saints. He was clothed with a robe dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of Yahuwah. Continuing. And the armies of heaven, the hosts of heaven, clothed in fine linen, white and clean, followed him on white horses. Now out of his mouth goes a sharp sword, 
that with it he should strike the nations, and he himself will rule them with a rod of iron. He himself treads the winepress of the fierceness and wrath of Almighty Yahuwah. So we see the armies, the host of heaven. The host of heaven are the angelic armies, the angelic hosts, the Malachim, the angels. What are they dressed in? They're dressed in linen, linen garments. In Revelation chapter 15, verse 6, we read, And out of the temple came the seven angels, having the seven plagues, clothed in pure, bright linen, and having their chests girded with golden bands. Once again, another example of the Malachim wearing linen. And so we know the priesthood, they all wore linen. We know the people wore linen. They lived in linen tents. The tabernacle was comprised of linen. Linen was a big deal. It was highly used in our society back then. They used wool. They used linen, just not together. And they had a different experience with the Most High. They seemed to know things that we don't seem to know. They seem to have a connection with him. Could linen be a missing piece? Could it be that the call to wear linen really was something that the Father did for us, not only to help us to be healthier, but also because it helps to modulate in our lives the frequency that the Father brings when he draws near? And could it be that having linen is something that we need so that we can better bear the presence of the Most High as he draws near? It's possible. It's very possible. Let us all seek the Father and ask him, is it possible that we need to be wearing more linen? Are you asking this of us? I know personally, the Father has been really speaking to my heart about wearing more linen. He wants me to wear linen. He wants me to wear white linen, light colored fabrics. And he's been telling me this now for over a year. And so I have added more linen to my, you know, to my closet, to my, to my wardrobe. And so I've been wearing it more and more and more. And I have noticed a difference. And so I want to encourage you to think about it, pray about it, and see if the Father is also calling you to add more linen to your wardrobe. Maybe you want to get some linen sheets and start sleeping on linen instead of sleeping on cotton. Most of the cotton these days is GMO cotton, so it's not going to have a high 110 frequency or 100. It's going to be more like 40, okay? And we know that that's not going to be a a healing uh, vibration for us. So, where to get your linen? If you want to add linen to your to your life, if you want to find linen sheets, linen pillowcases, and things of that nature, I recommend rummage sales, garage sales, rummage sales, um, thrift stores, things of that nature, antique shops. You may be able to find those things there from people who used to use these things but now no longer have a need for them, and you may be able to get a decent deal on them. So you know, your local goodwill and things of that nature. Just try it out and see what you can find, okay? You might be able to find things like that on the Facebook marketplace, you know, things like that. You might be able to find things on sale. Sometimes Amazon has some good deals on linen sheets. Uh, Also Etsy. Etsy is a shop online where people uh, sell a lot of products that they make with their hands. And so I've been getting a fair amount of my things on Etsy and having them shipped to the house. So there are a number of things that you can do to try to get a good deal on your linen. So just take it a little at a time. Whenever you can find a piece, purchase it, especially if you can get a good deal like at a thrift store or something of that nature. And you should be able to find some decent pieces. So when you go to buy your linen at a thrift shop, just make sure the label says 100% linen. Linen, nothing else, okay? You don't want it mixed with anything, unless it's mixed with cotton. If it's mixed with cotton, it's suitable. It's suitable. It's not the best, but it's suitable. You certainly don't want it mixed with wool. Well, I pray that this has been a barakah to you today, as we have learned about the power of linen and wool in our lives, just as long as they're not mixed together. The Father has given us these wonderful precious gifts, these things that we had no clue about. We had no idea what the benefits of wearing wool or wearing linen were. We didn't know. We didn't know what we didn't know. 
and we have been filling our lives, our homes, our closets with fabrics that suck the life right out of us. It's everywhere. Think about it. Think about all that your hands and your feet and your body touches on a daily basis. Almost everything is some sort of fabric that depletes, depletes, depletes your strength and doesn't add anything to it. This is how we've been living. So let's make a change. Let's keep Torah. Let's obey the Father's commandments. Let's do what's pleasing in his sight and return to those old paths. Let's find our way back to the old landmarks. And let's start incorporating more linen into our lives. And may the Father Baruch you as you go out searching for it because purchasing it, if you have that in your budget, is great. But being able to find it at a good deal, like at a rummet sale, as I stated, would be an extra special baraka. So pray about that and see what the Father would have you to do. Thank you for joining me once again on the channel, brothers and sisters, and for another session of our Torah Tidbit, Torah Chunk. I pray that you've learned something today, and I pray that you will take what you have learned and take it before the Father and allow him to speak to you and minister to you regarding these things. The beauty of the linen is what it represents for us. It represents righteousness. It represents standing in the presence of the Most High and being accepted and not being destroyed because the Father says, you have my stamp of approval. And we know that we have his stamp of approval, not because of our righteousness. Our righteousness is his filthy rags, but our righteousness is of Yahusha. So we wear his clothing. It is because of his sacrifice that we're able to stand before the Father clean, cleared, not guilty. Hallelujah. We've been absolved from our guilt and from our shame. So I pray, brothers and sisters, that the Most High Yahuwah would Baruch and keep you, and that he would make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you, that he would lift up his countenance upon you and grant you shalom and shalom and peace in every area of your life. And I pray that he will Baruch you as you set about to incorporate more linen and or wool, but not at the same time, into your life, into your bedding, your clothing, your towels, your 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 tablecloths, and all of those things. So I just pray that the Father would help you to bring more of those things into your life that is going to be health promoting and not health and not detrimental to your health. Shalom and shalom, brothers and sisters. Shalom and shalom. <laughs>